Hello, good morning and welcome to our HOWS webinar today. Um, my name is Olivia and our session today is all focused on working with clients. So specifically giving you tools for seamless collaboration. So if this is your first time joining us in a webinar, welcome. <laughs> um, if you've joined us before, thanks for coming again. Um, we're using GoToWebinar today, so just before I do kind of dive into the content, um, if you do have any questions at any point or you can't hear me, you can't see the slides, uh, anything like that, you can let me know by just going into the control panel, which should be on your right hand side. Uh, there's a section called questions and there's a section called chat. You could just put your note in either one of those and I will try to answer as best I can. We are also recording this session today. So if you do uh, have any kind of follow-ups or anything like that, of course, reach out to me directly, but just know that you'll also be receiving a recording of this. <laughs> so like I said, today we are focusing on the tools for seamless collaboration and basically, creating or how to create great customer experience at every stage of the project. So we'll cover um, what's on the screen here, which is basically just understanding hows first. I just want to still give a bit of context to hows before we do dive into these um, tips and tricks. And then we'll go into the best practices about the power of responsiveness, navigating in-person meetings, on the job tips that actually work as well, uh, which is all really cool, very relevant. Um, and these have all come not just from us, uh, Hows, but also from our professionals. So we really did collaborate with some of our um, fantastic professionals to get their feedback on what really works for them and what their best practice is. So before I do start, Hows uh, is the world's largest online community for home design and renovation. Uh, we are this fantastic source for professionals and homeowners or renovators alike. So you guys as professionals can obviously use the platform to create a professional listing, uh, be found on the site, really build some brand awareness, treat it like an online portfolio basically to reach these new clients and just a new audience that you know is really relevant and that are really working on projects currently. The users, they obviously love it because they're getting some inspiration, they can look at photos, read articles, get some advice, and the best thing is that they can always track where that advice came from, where that photo came from, so they can click into that, see your name, and contact professionals directly. So it started in America um, in 2009, so quite a long time now. Um, by a husband and wife here, a D and a Lon. They um, themselves actually went through this terrible renovation on their first home. So that frustration basically led them to create house. They wanted to create this one-stop shop that basically provided an end-to-end -end solution in the home design, home renovation, um, home decoration space, just to make that whole process just a whole lot easier for them as homeowners, but also for professionals alike. So they created House, which really has evolved to have these five key layers to it. Um, those five layers are on the screen and they are really connected with such smart technology that does allow House to really uh, hone in in this vertical platform and answer all of the right questions. It really is this end-to-end -end solution. So our five layers are photos. Obviously, that is where really people spend the most amount of time online is looking at photos and house is no different. Um, our editorial section, which is fantastic. We feature local projects, products, professionals. Um, professionals can also write for us and contribute to articles. We have a fantastic product section that allows you to find uh, local products and also global products for brands and retailers. Um, we can really help you showcase your products to this really relevant audience. Our discussion section is a community advice forum, which is a great place to uh, 
basically throw your hat in the ring and just give some advice, show off your expertise. But you can also use our discussion section to really kind of um, network with other professionals. And then our services are obviously our service directory. So that is the professionals. If you've signed up with a professional profile, uh, which you have <laughs> because you're in this webinar, um, you are automatically listed in our service directory. And there's a couple of different ways in which you can really uh, go up the ranks in that directory as well. So those are the five layers. And because it is such a well-integrated site, it has led to us exploding globally. So we now have 40 million unique users coming on the site every single month. In Australia alone, it's 1.5 million, which is really cool. And our Australian site was launched uh, just in 2014. We also like to show off that we won the Google Play Award for the best app of the year, uh, which is a really exciting thing. That is like the uh, Oscars of the tech world. So to win that um, is very exciting. I will just note too, um, now that the logo is so big on this slide, uh, we've recently updated our logo. Um, so you should see that on your app or just across the site as well. So just note if you have um, any of our branding, like on maybe a badge on your website or something, um, that that may need to be updated with the new logo. So yes, we have this huge uh, user audience. So like I said, 40 million every month globally, 1.5 just in Australia. So that is a fantastic thing to be seen by all of those people. But what is even cooler is that we know just how our users move around the site and how they do use it. So this is important to note as a pro, just to see where you may come up and where you can really kind of tap into along this timeline to make sure that the maximum amount of users can see your work. So typically people come onto house uh, looking for ideas, looking for inspiration, they're looking at the photo stream. So they do spend the most amount of time in the photo stream, which is why it is so important to make sure your best photos are uploaded to your profile, you're keywording them, you're categorizing them well. Uh, then they really do dive into that discussion section of the site to get advice from other homeowners or other renovators, as well as professionals that could give them some actual expert advice. From there, they really are actually making a decision about who they are hiring and they're going into that service directory and hiring professionals in their local area for their projects. Then houses used um, in more of that product section uh, where we see a lot of people coming back in just to look for more kind of the finishing touches, the styling elements and those smaller products to complete the project. So that's typically how someone moves around. And that is where along any of that timeline, they could come across your profile. So 85 times on the screen here, that is how many times the average person checks their phone on one day. <laughs> So this is based off a study from Nottingham uh, Trent University, and they found that the average person checks their phone 85 times a day and uses their device for five hours each day as well. <laughs> so for millennials, that's the generation reaching young adulthood in the early 21st century, they agreed at very high percentages with these statements on the slide. So this is really the next generation of clients. Like we can see that 87% said that their smartphone actually never leaves their side day or night, which is pretty crazy. So what does this mean for your business? What do these stats mean for you? Well, basically, if you are not mobile friendly, if your website isn't mobile friendly, um, if you're not responsive online or using other platforms like Hows or like other social media platforms, then really your business doesn't exist. And it really is hard for you to be found um, by new clients um, and just by your local audience as well. So Google says that more searches are done on a mobile device than on a desktop now. And definitely the house that um, supports that as well. So our research 
supports that because most of the our house activity is actually done from a mobile device uh, rather than a desktop. So simply put, if you aren't mobile friendly, then you just don't really exist. So if you want to build your brand today, you need to reach what we call an empowered client. So what we know about them is, as we just discussed, they're on their phones a lot. <laughs> so basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in the line for supermarket, in bed, at work, and constantly on that device. The empowered client is well-researched. They are online uh, getting and retaining knowledge about whatever purchase or hiring decision they are making, especially when it comes to their home. Uh, the empowered client is also really an engaged participant in all this. So very few clients just hand over a budget and say, I'll see you in six months, <laughs> go be alive. They really want to feel a part of the process and really that they are contributing to intelligent, empowered decision making. So that being said, that does change how you do brand yourself in this digital age. Um, and next we will dive into how you actually work with the client that you have and those tools for seamless collaboration. But do know that this is the step just before that. So branding yourself in this new age is really important. And it is really about creating all of these points that are on the screen. So to begin, people are exposed to your brand in online micro moments. So they might read a review or see a photo of work that you did. That is a micro moment where they see your name, they see your work, and they remember you from there. They are looking to fulfill both rational and emotional needs. So people buy emotionally and then they justify it rationally. And you can't just push them information. You do need to respond. So if you put anything out there online and you don't answer when someone reaches out to you, you have lost them. And that is someone that's quite engaged with your work. So it is really worthwhile that um, you contact them or respond to them as soon as possible. And consumers are out there searching, pulling in information that they want, and they are really in control. So do keep these in mind and just do keep this in mind because this is the kind of stalker that you do really want to cultivate. So you want to cultivate these nice stalkers that are engaged, they're seeing your work, they're coming back to your work, they're having an emotional connection uh, to your work as well. Before I do dive into um, these different tools for collaboration, I do just want to show you um, a fantastic profile here by Dan Kitchens Australia. So we've talked a lot about just branding in the digital age and how that looks uh, now and how it has changed. On House, you have a profile, the same format or template for everyone, but of course, some really do tell a fantastic story and some have really used it to brand themselves really, really well online. One example of that is Dan Kitchens here. So you can see that I have gotten such a good read of what this business does straight from this profile. So they have a lot of followers and all their other social media links and their contact details here. But more importantly, they have fantastic reviews and a lot of reviews. They actually have 86. Uh, some fantastic photos that are all professionally photographed. Uh, they have a lot of text that we can read through to really get a sense of who they are. We see a great byline on the right hand side where I can see that they are a Sydney designer kitchens with Danish heritage. They're recommended by us as well. So I really do get a fantastic sense of um, this business. So this is something that just when we kind of walk away from this session, uh, this is a great thing to kind of um, strive for, for your own profile. Later on, I will talk a little bit more about branding. So we've kind of covered it now and I will touch back at the end. Uh, but do just know that we do offer some really local targeted branding for our professionals. Uh, that is called Pro Plus. It's basically an exclusive marketing program that can just really 
flip your existing profile into something that is really working for you um, and your branding and for your local audience. So you guys get a discount because you attended a webinar. So do just note um, when I do mention it later that you are uh, open to a discount too. So let's go into all these tools. So like I said, all of these different tips that I'm going through, these have been um, put together not by just our house team and our marketing team, uh, but also by our professionals. So we've really gotten these fantastic best practices uh, straight from professionals as well. So we know that delivering great work is only half of the equation when it comes to leaving homeowners happy. A good customer service is one of the most important things that homeowners look for when making a hiring decision. So it's also one of the things that they remember most after the project is done and when they're writing a review for you. So what kind of experience are you giving your clients? Are they wowed by your prompt responses, your friendly responses to questions? Do you receive a lot of great referrals? So those are the kind of things that we should start thinking about. And those are the kind of um, tips that we will be just running through today. And this is a fantastic um, input just from Paul Cole here that does say if you have uh, if you have good customer service, clients in turn will pass your name onto their neighbours and the people they know. So that really does move you into having this wider network and a real community around your business. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so the first real tip is knowing the power of responsiveness. So today's clients know what they want and they know that they want it now. So with the in internet at their fingertips, like we've just covered, they can quickly access a nearly infinite, infinite amount of ideas and number of people, a number of products as well. So if they don't get a response from one professional, if they don't get a response from you, then they will be ready and waiting to just call another one straight away. So how you how can you continue to win clients in this new era of doing business? Basically responding promptly to voicemails, emails, messages, direct messages or questions on hows as well, that will increase the likelihood of winning the job. So like Tamara says here, I respond to inquiries as fast as humanly possible. And you should really make it a priority because <clears throat> Uh, it may never lead to anything, um, but really like Tamara says here, <clears throat> I make it a priority and never leave them hanging, even if it means I have to work extra. We're crazy busy, but you have to make time for these new clients because that's what keeps the business going. So that responsiveness. So I know a lot of people have a pipeline of six months, 18 months, <laughs> 20 months, a few years. I know you do have that pipeline that's being built up, but you don't know when this um, person really does want the job. Things may change in terms of uh, the timing, the money situation. So just remembering that responding as quickly as possible is the most important thing, first of all, then work out your pipeline and the timeline from there. And you can really increase your odds as well. So responding to a potential client interested in hiring you within five minutes, that increases your chances um, of contacting them by a hundred times. So you will most likely continue that conversation if you respond within five minutes. If you respond after 30 minutes, you've almost lost them. So do remember that, that can really increase your odds. And also, the average time uh, it takes small businesses to respond to an interested client is 48 minutes. So set yourself apart and impress eager homeowners by being more responsive. So maybe it is that you respond within five minutes and that's just to say, thank you, I've received your inquiry, we're looking through it, I'll get back to you in 48 hours, in a week's time or whatever. But just make sure that that very first contact, that is being tackled straight away. 
Then our next tip really focuses on answering calls professionally. So every time the phone rings, it could be a chance to impress a potential client. So answering professionally will ensure you will make a good first impression and that will really set um, the best path to win the business. So no caller should ever have to ask if they've reached the right person or the right business. And I know a lot of particularly small businesses, um, your work phone is also your personal phone, so it does become difficult. But just remember, no one should ever ask, oh, is this Jane Doe construction or is this um, Olivia? They should be 100% aware that this is the business that they were after. On the screen here are a few ways that you can answer the phone to really just start impressing clients straight from the beginning. So do just make your own version of those examples from the previous slide. Just make sure it's a reflection of you, your brand, um, it's snappy. Be sure um, to just include some variation of these three elements. So some kind of greeting, it's your name and company name. So very simple, but I cannot tell you how many uh, working in house, how many businesses I have run and have had no idea who I am speaking to at the other end. So tracking leads. One of the most important questions to ask a potential client is how they found your business. The answer to this question will help you not only track which leads are coming from which channel or which platform, but it will also um, just kind of give you a gauge of how familiar they are with your work. So how much of your work they have actually seen. If they came from house, chances are they read your reviews, they looked through your projects, uh, which is good. If they maybe saw you on just some kind of uh, other listing, it may just be that they saw your business name or your logo and your location. So definitely ask so you can get a, a read of how much they know about you. Uh, and Tina from Zia Interiors, she has said, this um, interior design professional, interior designer, says that she begins her screening process by asking how they found me, so straight away. Were they referred to me or did they see a project somewhere online? Oftentimes they have seen my work on house and called me, but I ask because I want to know what advertising method is working best. And I keep a log of how clients find me. This also gives me an idea of the demographics of the project uh, if they were a referral client. So that is something that's really interesting to note. And if you are um, on Pro Plus, which was the local branding that I mentioned earlier, uh, part of that program is also call tracking. So we actually will keep a log for you that um, is on your ProPlus profile. So you're able to see all of those calls that came via your profile. Um, so you can keep track of those clients um, and the calls as well. <coughs> Ask the right questions. So taking the time to ask questions and understand a potential client's goals makes them feel valued um, and really does allow you to build rapport. In addition, you'll get a better idea of the project scope, the budget and the timeline to determine if it is a good job for your business. We actually have a cheat sheet for you as well. So I can send that along um, following this session. It basically um, is just a bit of a cheat, a cheat sheet to just make sure that you are prepared to screen new leads um, with a list of questions. So you can quickly have this cheat sheet in front of you when you do receive a call. Um, so you can really have those essential questions ready and waiting to ask. So like I said, um, you can email me directly for that cheat or I can uh, just send it to you following the session. <clears throat> and Jenny from Sn uh, Snella Custom Homes, just on the topic of asking the right questions, she has said that when potential clients call in, I have a list of questions I ask them. We want to know if they're going to be the right fit, otherwise it's a waste of everyone's time. One of the big things we ask is where they are located. 
There are certain neighborhoods where we'll take any job because we want to grow in that area of town. While other areas that um, are further out might be a stretch. So that's a really um, fantastic point as well from Jenny there. Schedule a call. So if a homeowner reaches out via text, uh, email, through any kind of messaging channel, always you can get more information over the phone. So even if the project doesn't sound like a great fit initially, schedule a call and ask the questions to find out what the potential client's goals really are. You may have a solution the homeowner never considered. So. As uh, some professionals have said, uh, like Morgan from System Pavers, he has said that we respond to every message on House or Facebook and ask for a contact number. Even if the client initially asks for something we don't do, we'll try and contact them over the phone. If we can get them over the phone and start asking questions to better understand what they need, they may realize that they want something different to what they initially did. So that is a really fantastic um, point from Morgan there. And I would definitely encourage you to do that too. Just because you receive maybe a short message uh, on house or your other social media platforms, maybe just through your website even, and it does seem like not a great fit or not something you would usually do, schedule a call to really find out. So then it's a win-win for you both, you and the client, to see is this gonna be a fit for each other? If not, no harm done. <laughs> Moving into now navigating the in-person meeting. <clears throat> so good communication is critical for client satisfaction. For homeowners who are unfamiliar with home renovation and projects, articulating their vision can really, really be a challenge. So they may think that they want a contemporary look, but they may actually be thinking about more of a Scandinavian look, but not be sure how to best articulate that. Many homeowners aren't necessarily familiar with the exact terms, the exact styling and the jargon that professionals use. One great way to kind of clear up communication is by using idea books on house. So these are basically like a virtual scrapbook and this can be a fantastic collaboration tool to help overcome that initial obstacle and just ensure that all parties are on the same page. So an idea book on house is just basically any photo on house can be saved into an idea book. You can have as many idea books as you like and you can invite other collaborators into it. So we can start this idea book uh, me as the professional can invite my client into it. So then we can both be saving photos into this, both be writing notes under each photo about what it is we like or we don't like. And this will really help <clears throat> just make sure we're on the same page. And so we can arrive with, at the meeting with a few more ideas up our sleeve. <clears throat> so Jennifer here, um, has said that taking time to start an idea book with a potential client makes them feel invested in working with you. And it's another way to just get skin in the game. And also that <clears throat> another great tip is that when they come to our showroom, we take the time to show them around, introduce them to the team and allow them to open and play with the cabinetry. We give them a goodie bag, a nice canvas bag with some publications in it and our design agreement. So both are really fantastic ways of just clearing up uh, that initial communication. So getting them engaged, <coughs> excuse me, in the showroom uh, and also just making sure that an idea book with some initial ideas is set up. Give some space. So winning the job feels good, but giving homeowners ample time to make their decision allows them to be comfortable and confident in their decision without the feeling of being rushed. So even if it means letting them go home to think about it or letting them go and shop around, I would say definitely do that. So don't push the sale 
always allow adequate time for every customer so no one does feel rushed. There is no worse feeling of being pushed um, or rushed by someone else. That will really ensure that you're providing a good uh, experience and that you are showing them your full attention. So you can't rush people um, if you want them and you can't rush them to spend money either. So do remember to just give them a little bit of breathing room. On the job, so a good customer experience should continue even after you've closed the deal. So sending regular updates and keeping communication lines open will help avoid any miscommunication and ensure that the project goes well. So keep an open dialogue with your clients during the design, the renovation, and all the way up to the final days of the project. Further than that, I would schedule regular site visits at the client's home while it's being renovated, um, have the renovation team, the builders, whoever, take pictures every day or every night at the end of the day, just so that is really ensuring that both of the design and the renovation aspects of the project are up to standards of quality for you and for that homeowner. I would definitely just keep all communication lines open so that customer does feel heard um, and that they don't feel like um, it's being rushed and they do just feel very much empowered uh, within the project. So these are some good um, tips on the screen here. Uh, but as well as just keeping an open dialogue, scheduling the range regular visits and just constantly communicating, I would definitely encourage you to keep uh, a lot of communication over the phone. So do keep it quite old fashioned. <laughs> communicating over the phone on a regular basis will help everyone stay on the same page, especially when it comes to important conversations about project scope or making design decisions. So too much gets lost in the interpretations of texts or even emails. So it's one thing if you're texting about like a time or a place to meet, that's okay. Uh, but other than that, I would definitely keep it a bit more old fashioned and give your client a call. It's really important to just hear that other person's voice so you can get even more of a gauge of how they really are feeling um, about that particular moment in time and the particular project. And then listen and validate. So there are bound to be bumps uh, along the road in any project. So when dealing with an unhappy client, take the time to understand their concerns and find a solution that can really help get the job back on track. So a major tip here is just listen and be empathetic. Always validate the client's uh, comments and criticisms so they feel heard. Mary Miller, our interior designer, she has said that uh, about just listening and being empathetic to the client, that I feel this opens a dialogue where they will maintain trust in your abilities. If you have the ability to fix the problem, do everything in your power to make the correction in a timely manner. They will appreciate you making the extra effort to take care of them. And that is a really, really good point. Um, and really, I think the most important thing to do when things don't go to plan um, so especially in construction, those things do happen along the way. Address whatever the issue is as quickly as possible. A solution to that problem needs to be the top priority to really get the job back on track. So communicate that to the client, that this is your priority um, and that you have a plan of action and that you also have some anticipated uh, timeline uh, attached to this as well. The most difficult issues are those that are no one's fault, <laughs> but that can be quite tricky. So always have um, a conversation with your client prior to the job or the construction even starting to explain that having a small contingency fund will make things and events a lot less stressful 
um, just as the project is going along. And then when it's done, leave on a good note. So send clients off with a thank you note, customer satisfaction survey, or a small gift to show that you value their experience even once a project is complete. This is a fantastic um, quote from Sabrina here that says, if I photograph a project, I usually have a lovely professionally designed flower arrangement made in a vase to go with the look of the rooms being photographed. I leave the arrangement and vase for the homeowner as a thank you gift. And that is a lovely gesture to do that I would definitely um, really respect and really resonate with if I was the client um, of Sabrina's. Wrap up meetings are another opportunity to say thanks. So at the end of a project, go out, have a meeting with the client, just to make sure that they are satisfied with the way the project turned out. Uh, Davis um, from CG and S Design Build, he has said that we make a postcard that they can keep to thank them and we've put a before and after photo on it. So it's cute, little sentimental thing that they get really excited about. It reminds them of what their home looked like before and they can see the difference side by side. So that's another beautiful gesture that is showing the complete um, kind of, yeah, before and after or complete flip of that house. And it's something just so small, like the flowers, um, that is a lovely gesture that they would really, really appreciate. If you as well have some amazing before and after photos, make sure you show those off. So you show your client online that you are proud of this project as well. So any before and after photos, upload them to house, show off what you're doing, upload them to your Facebook, to your website, to really show off this new completed project. We have a lot of other tips uh, similar to what I have just covered today uh, on house and available for you to read at any time. <laughs> so we do give you a lot of resources online. So if you are ever in our stories section, so our editorial section where you can read about trends and tours and a lot of other design inspiration, we have an additional section just down the bottom that is called tips for pros. There's another one also called how to use hows if you need some hows specific tips. But in the tips for pros section, this has a lot of fantastic content for you that you can pull out about how you can uh, use social media to empower you, how you can get in front of a wider audience and show you some additional uh, tools for seamless collaboration with your clients. Uh, I did mention Pro Plus along the way during this um, session today, but I did just want to talk about it a little bit further because like I said, you do get a discount um, as being a webinar attendee. And this is a really fantastic program that allows you to target a local audience. So you have an organic profile on house, which is fantastic. It's a great way uh, to showcase your products or your projects. Uh, your reviews, your texts, and all of that. But it is not uh, targeted local branding as such because you are being seen by this really wide audience. With Pro Plus, you can hone in on an audience and really target who you want. So say uh, you're in Sydney and you want to work more in the eastern suburbs as a kitchen designer, you can do that. So you can buy space in that category and in that location. So users in the eastern suburbs will be guaranteed to see your work. And apart from that, we give all these additional uh, aspects too that are on the screen. So your photos are sponsored, they're pushed out in front of that local audience and they're guaranteed uh, eyeballs on them <laughs> in the areas that you actually want. Photos look fantastic. They have a call to action button, a byline, some additional um, photos to click through as well. You get first page placement in our directory, so that's the service directory. Uh, banner ads in the newsletter, enhanced mobile exposure. You also get some really detailed analytics, and this is something that is really important if you uh, are really quite interested in 
which photos are resonating the most, who is coming to your profile, when are they coming to your profile, how many people have come here. You can really get a deep dive into all these analytics uh, straight on your profile. I mentioned call tracking as well, which is another element that gets added here. So you can see just where all your clients are coming from and when. You also get an account manager to help you make sense of all of this and help optimize the program for you. So your account manager works like a social media expert, a marketing expert, a support line, um, an analyst for you as well. So they optimize your profile. They make sure it looks fantastic. They upload photos for you. They do a deep dive into the analytics for you, make sense of all of that. And they are with you for the entire length of the program. So if you did want more information about this, please let me know um, in the chat section or in the question section uh, or just by emailing me. And do remember that you get a discount. <laughs> so I will send you through a recording of this uh, later this week. If you have any questions in the meantime, please do let me know. Uh, my email is on the screen so you can email me directly. If you are interested in attending any other webinars or other events that we're doing um, across Australia, you can always see what's coming up uh, just on our events page, which is house.com.au slash events. So thank you so much for joining um, and have a lovely day. Thank you.